So let's have a conversation about emotions and leadership. So emotions aren't good or bad. They're like fuel, useful when contained, destructive when they're not. Hey, I'm Adrian Kaler. I'm a coach for company founders, entrepreneurs, and corporate execs, and welcome to Fearless Leadership. So watch to the end of this video. I've got a free gift for you. Anytime people are in transition, emotions are high, you need to know how to handle those well. This gift will translate drama into conviction. So at the top of this video, I want to dispel some myths about emotions. The first one is this. Like when people say, and you might have said it, I lost my temper. That's a myth. What, what's actually happening is I indulged my temper. I used my temper. I used my temper to do what? What did you do, do it for? Maybe to get power, to coerce someone else, to shut down a conversation, to make yourself look good. What do you use your temper for instead of, I lost my temper? So the second myth is that there's no room for emotions and leadership. And the news flash is that anywhere there's a human, there's going to be emotions present. It, are you going to avoid them and stuff them down and make people pay later? That's what a lot of people prefer to do. Or learn how to talk about them in a way that can actually be positive and generative and connected. Third myth, emotions are feminine. The reality is women are much more acquainted with their emotional life than men are. So w women can trade in emotions and connect with emotions and, and express themselves with emotion. Most of the guys I work with, they tend to not trust their emotions because they, don't, they feel out of control with them. Instead of actually learning how to get language for them, learning how to use them as a connective tool, learning how to express vision with conviction, most people shut that down and then pay the price later for it. The next myth is that emotions are too complicated. I'd say that's not true. Actually, life is really complicated. Emotions give us language for what's really intuitive for us. It's our hunches. It's our apparitions. It's the fears, convictions, all this that's really inside. And so we don't talk about it because we don't want to deal with what's there for us. But that ends up getting in our way. So you could trust your emotions. They're telling you something maybe that you're not ready to hear yet. Start listening and you'll start to employ them. So the question for us is how do we use our emotions and leadership in order to make the difference we want to make, in order to connect the way we want to connect? Depending on where you've come from, the reality is, is all this emotional world is simple, but it's not easy. It's going to take a lot of practice. This is what you don't learn in business school. It's hard to read a book about this. It actually is something you learn out on the field. So the first step to utilizing your emotion is awareness. And then what this takes is actually slow down for a second and wonder, what's going on for me? Like when I feel that, what is, what am I feeling? Like what's going on for me? Both of what are my sensations and what am I making up about what's going on for me? All that, that's the first step is just to slow down for a second, get out of the, the chaos of the moment and get connected to yourself. So I know for me what shows up, if I feel like I've been really extending on behalf of a person or on the team or really pushing myself out and I've not been asserting for what I want, I've got this emotion that shows up called the bitter butler. And that's like this persona that I feel coming up where it's like, I'm look how hard I'm working. Don't you guys recognize it? That comes up, swells up like resentment for me. And just having a name and being aware of it actually lets me know what's happening for me. And, and, and it takes me out of like being that person and I can see that person happening or seeing those feelings happening. I can, and then I can connect with them or disconnect from them. Then I've got options. So after you're willing to be aware of what's going on for you, the second step is to be curious about it, to explore it, to investigate it. As I wonder how this is so for me. So it might be some of those thoughts of like, really, what am I projecting? What am I scared about? What am I curious about? What do I really want? all those convictions, what's history that's showing up right in my face, you could be curious about it. Every great leader I know is a champion of self-mastery and you see yourself and knowing your own machinery really helps them bring their gifts to the table. So the human brain can't hold two states simultaneously. So if you find yourself angry, you can't be both angry and curious at the same time. So if you choose curiosity, it's gonna dispel the anger. So the next step, which most people don't even consider doing, is owning the impact of your emotion. Like your attitude and how you are and what's coming out of you is actually your responsibility. That's what I'm inviting you to do, is I wonder how those emotions are affecting other people. So what most people call emotions are actually the reactive state that comes from our needs not getting met. So after you've owned your impact on somebody else, is actually to ask yourself the question, do I want to partner with this emotion and actually what it's, what it's coming from? Or do I just want to avoid it and try not to be that reactive? I'm going to invite you to actually utilize this thing. There's a conversation before the emotion. That's where you want to focus. So the last step is to own the fact that you've got a choice. Are you going to partner with this emotion or are you going to fight against it? So here's my promise to you is that if you question your relationship to your own emotions, it opens up the possibility of your emotional life being an asset to you instead of a liability. Now about that free gift that I promised you. It's an ebook called The Change Imperative. It's about how to innovate with your team. Anytime any team's going through change and transition, emotions are high. You know what I'm talking about. If you want to learn how to employ the, this conversation we just had into impactful transition with your team, 
click on the link in the description. So thanks so much for watching. If you're done acting like a robot in leadership, say I'm done in the comments. If you're getting value out of this video, please like it and subscribe it. And remember, your team is counting on you.